problem 4.3-1. Find the maximum shear stress in the solid shaft. The diameter of the shaft is 50 millimeters. The shear modulus, G, is 75 gigapascals. Solve using the force method. Here's the shaft. It's fixed at two ends, A and D. There are two external torques applied. The dimensions are given. Let's begin this problem. With the force method, we use the principle of superposition to divide up this problem into two problems that are simpler for us to handle. First of all, I'm going to remove the wall at A. If I remove the wall at A in this first problem, then the member is no longer fixed and it is free to rotate. When these two torques are applied, we'll expect to see an angle of twist at the end A. We can call it phi of t because it was uh, it was a result of the applied torques. Now in our second drawing we represent what the wall is actually doing. The wall is exerting a torque T of A on the shaft and the wall is not going to allow the shaft to rotate as shown here above. So the rotation from this torque at the wall is going to be in the opposite direction and we can call it phi at A. We can now write our equation of compatibility. And our compatibility equation is that the angle of twist at A in the first diagram is equal to the angle of twist at A in the second diagram. And because they're in opposite directions, they're canceling each other out. So we can write that as phi sub t is equal to phi sub A. The next step is to expand our compatibility equation. If we were to draw an internal torque diagram for this top member, it would look like this. From A to B, there are no external torques being applied. So the internal torque is zero. At B, an external torque of 325 newton meters in the positive direction, according to the right-hand rule, is applied. So our graph will jump up to a value of 325 and stay constant from B to C. At C, an additional torque is applied, also in the positive direction, of a magnitude 150 newton meters. So we will jump up an additional 150 newton meters to 475 newton meters and remain there from C to D. If we were to plot an internal torque diagram for the bottom member, it will look something like this. At a, we will have a torque applied of magnitude T sub A, and it's in the negative direction, and it will stay constant from A all the way to the support at D. Now I've expanded my compatibility equation by substituting in TL over JG for my values for phi. Now for phi sub T, uh, if we look at the internal force diagram, we see that the internal torque actually changes. Uh, from B to C to C to D. And so we need to use two terms to express phi sub T. This first term is from B to C and the second term is from C to D. Now the torque in the first term is we can see on the diagram 325 newton meters. The length is the length from B to C 0 0.9 meters and JG will just leave as it is. From C to D, in this next term, the internal torque is 475 newton meters. We see in our internal torque diagram. The length from C to D is 1.1 meters. That is set equal to the expression for angle of twist in the bottom member, phi sub A. For this term, we will replace T with T sub A as shown in the internal torque diagram at the bottom. That internal torque is acting along the entire length which is 3.3 meters and that's over JG. Notice I didn't put a negative sign on TA even though we see in our diagram that it must be negative. That's because of the compatibility equation we have written here is just comparing the magnitude of angle of twist uh, phi sub t to the magnitude of angle of twist 
phi sub a. And we know from our diagram here that those are in opposite directions, and they're actually canceling each other out. So all we are interested in is the magnitude. Now, because jg is the same in each term, they cancel out, and we can solve for t sub a is equal to 247 newton meters. Now I've drawn a free body diagram of the member, and we can use it to solve for t sub d. We will sum the torques equal to zero. We will use the right hand rule to determine if a applied torque is positive or negative. Summing the torques equal to zero, we can solve for T sub D, it is equal to 228 newton meters. I can now draw an internal torque diagram for the whole member from A to D. At A, we see a negative 247 newton meter torque applied, and it'll be constant from A to B, negative 247 newton meters. At B, we see a 325 newton meter torque applied in the positive direction. This will cause a jump in our internal torque diagram up 325 newton meters to a value of 78 positive newton meters. And it will remain constant from B to C. At C, we see an additional jump of 150 newton meters in the positive direction. That will bump us up to a value of 228 newton meters in the positive direction. At T sub D, we see a final jump of 228 newton meters in the negative direction. That will close our graph to zero, and we have confidence that we did it right. The maximum stress will occur in the shaft at the point where we have our maximum internal torque, since our cross-section is constant throughout the shaft. So our maximum torque is between A and B. It's 247 newton meters. Notice I'm looking at absolute value. The sign is not very important to me when calculating the value for shear stress. The maximum shear stress is equal to the maximum torque, 247 newton meters, times the radius. The diameter was given to us as 50 millimeters, so the radius will be 50 millimeters, or 0 0.05 meters, divided by 2 all divided by the polar moment of inertia, which is the radius to the fourth power times pi halves. We get an answer of 10.1 megapascals. And we're done.